Hello, and welcome to Sovereign Earth. So, just while I wait for one or two of you to link in and join me this evening, um, Sovereign Earth number 29 already, goodness me, and tonight's all about kindness. So I can see a couple of you linking in there. Very kind, it feels kind. John King and Isalinda Damas and Karen Cooper, lovely. So beautiful, and I guess Lynn might well be there up in Scotland. Adna Murchen with John, if I've pronounced that right, in Scotland. Isalinda from Portugal. Is Harris also from Scotland? Karen from England, lovely. Beautiful, so kindness. Yeah, just reminding myself and all of us. Um, oh, there's Melanie from California. Beautiful. Oh no, from Portugal. <laughs> no, Melanie. Melanie from California. I get confused sometimes. <laughs> Welcome all of you. Um, Sovereign Earth is all about and stemmed from this uh, wish to connect with the things that really matter in this world and can really make a difference. Things that we forget and um, things that matter, and kindness is one of those. And look how that doesn't reflect very fully in our politics, or not often. When it does, it's beautiful. Um, but one of the one of the lines I put up with it was Sovereign Earth. It's a language that the blind can see and the deaf can hear. And Mark Twain, as ever, came up with those beautiful words: a language that the blind can see and the deaf can hear. <coughs> and here we are at this time of Imolk. Um, the beginning of February is the time of tenderness, a real time of tenderness for me when the snowdrop shoots are just pushing up to the earth. Yeah, and real courage and strength, but tenderness, so delicate. So tenderness and kindness go together. Um, these things that can make a difference for the earth and for ourselves. We'll come into a more deeper, a deeper connection with kindness in a minute, but I'm going to start with a song that prepares the way for that. Go sweep out the chambers of your heart. Make it ready, I'll make it ready. To be a dwelling for the beloved. When you are empty, love will enter. Go sweep out the chambers of your heart. Make it ready, I'll make it ready. To be a dwelling for the beloved. When you are empty, love will enter. When you are empty, love will enter. When you are empty, love will enter. Mm. Maybe those of us who are linked in now, we can just close our eyes for a moment and just share three breaths together, coming into stillness, coming in kindness, honouring, celebrating and connecting with the spirit of kindness. We share three breaths, one for the kind earth beneath us, deep breath. Deep breath for the kindness of the sky above us. And a third breath with the kindness of the waters that surround us. And I invite us to share three our winds, flowing spirit, our wind, three breaths, three our winds, deep breath. 
So just holding on to, we can open our eyes and just coming together, holding on to that spirit of kindness, which is linked to other words such as grace and generosity and tenderness. <coughs> but kindness is, a, kindness is a wonderful word. It struck me that kind, in German, the word for child is kind, spelt the same as kind, kind, kind. And there is a childlike quality to kindness. And those words are clearly linked in historically. But now we all know what kindness is, but how do we, how do we categorize it or define it? Um, we can sense that it's something that feels beneficial, it gives a warmth, a joy, um, it, it, it brings me alive, and I can really bathe in the beauty of, of kindness and also that's the receiving part, but in giving kindness, it's also a gift, not just to someone else, but it's a gift to myself, to oneself. A really interesting paradox in a way, isn't it? In giving, we receive, in receiving, we're giving. And uh, kindness is a reward in itself. It's given unconditionally and um, such a gift to be great with kindness. Now, interestingly, um, just yesterday I was given, and often, we'll all have this hopefully in our lives, some random acts of kindness. So um, a friend, Janie Rose, who is an artist in, in the town where I live, um, I'd said how beautiful her paintings of Bridget, the goddess Bridget for Imolk were, and she, she um, basically she gifted me some, those, some, a car, some cards, a card with the, four images, these icon, beauty, beautiful icons on. Just randomly, um, how beautiful is that? Thank you, Janie, if, you, if you're watching. Um, Janie Rose, beautiful artwork. And tenderness, so kindness, kindness. It's, um, it's really interesting that they've done research and work that shows that it's one of the key attributes in choosing a partner. I mean, for some people, it's going to be prestige, wealth, status, for others, um, looks, maybe. <laughs> All sorts of different qualities and quirkiness. But kindness is up there with the best of, of, the quality, best of them as being a quality to look for in a partner. And I'm aware that, yeah, in my life, the people who've been closest to me have mattered the most. And it's certainly the reason I'm with my current partner and my beloved <coughs> Fleur, <coughs> it's kindness. That's the reason I fell for her, it was kindness. And um, um, this, yeah, there's some words, what was I gonna say? In fact, it's her kindness that has brought this program here. She, she, she's, uh, Fleur. Fleur was the reason I started these programs. <laughs> She kind of pushed me to do it out of kindness to myself, although, <laughs> uh, yeah, and it's quite a journey. But these, this is a beautiful poem by Dostoevsky, which I've, I've had, I mean, I've got my Book of Shinings, which I think some of you are aware of, a bit tattered and worn now over the years. It's got all my many scribblings, songs and prayers and things I love. And um, one from a long time ago, which I've been meaning to include on, in, in a Sovereign Earth broadcast before, and now it's come to pass, but just today, guess what, synchronicity, I came across it, someone had posted it on, where else, Facebook, when I was looking to set this program up. But the words are beautiful, it's full of kindness, this. Listen up. Love all creation, the whole of it, and every grain of sand. Love every leaf, 
every ray of God's light. Love the animals, love the plants, love everything. If you love everything, you'll perceive the divine mystery in things. And once you've perceived it, you'll begin to comprehend it ceaselessly, more and more every day. And you will at last come to love the whole world with an abiding universal love. So yeah, they're simple words, but they're, they're wise and there's so much, um, there's so much wisdom in kindness. And I think kindness is a crucial tool in uh, personal development. And it's a crucial tool in um, bringing our world into a more conducive to harmony and love and fulfillment place anyway. Um, it's, it's interesting, isn't it, that kindness changes each of us by practicing kindness I come into we come into more of a connection with that remarkable and wonderful gift which we take for granted but why should there be kindness in the world it's uh, that it's the fact it's available is a miracle but and linking with that kindness it takes me within to a kind of pool of bathe I bathe in the pool of kindness um, right in the still center of my being and it's interesting, it's a lot to do with being kindness, but it's an act ultimately, a doing, it's a thing that we do and act. Um, and what did I say? Yeah, one, some of the words I came up with for the, in, when I was thinking about kindness. Um, for beautiful lips, speak kindness, or for attractive lips, speak kindness. Um, and these words I came across in that book of Shinings, I showed you a couple of minutes ago. May I love myself just as I am. May I, may I sense my worthiness and well-being. May I trust this world. May I hold myself in compassion. May I meet the suffering and ignorance of others with compassion. May I meet the suffering and ignorance of myself with equal compassion. And I've said here that I think it's highly possible that kindness is the key to life. I put the key to life. It's certainly one of the keys to a good life, to a, to a fulfilled life. Um, Henry James said, there are three things in human life that are important. The first is to be kind. Second is to be kind. And the third is to be kind. And um, it's a really good one for me to try and remember, to speak kindness. Um, that's, that's something I'm working on. I don't always succeed. I guess many of us will probably recognize that we're not always kind, although we might want to be. Um, Speaking kindness, quite an art, quite a craft. Um, so um, I'm working on that one. Now, this, this is fascinating for me. L listen to this. There's a, there's a two and a half thousand years ago, thereabouts, might have been 3,000 years ago or 2,000 years ago, thousands of years ago. There was a book called the Tigi Kural. Tigi Kural. And it was a Tamil Vedas. It, in, in Indian history, the Vedas uh, are sacred texts from northern India, which record all the things that matter. Well, in the south of India, in the Tamil area, and in what is now Sri Lanka, I guess, what was Ceylon, this Tirukkural was written. And it's, it was considered to be one of the most... Um, one of the greatest works on ethics and morality. And guess what? And I love this. It um, had a whole chapter on kindness. A whole chapter on kindness. In with something the Dalai Lama, the current Dalai Lama said, my religion is very simple. My religion is kindness. 
And that's, um, yeah, beautiful, isn't it? And simple. That my religion is kindness. And it's interesting to me that science seems to be catching up. Or, because uh, in the Scientific American in 2017, there was an article subtitled, Forget Survival of the Fittest, It's Kindness That Counts. <laughs> so, um, who knows? They're, co they're coming, coming around to it too. And some words from Nietzsche that I love. He says that kindness was one of the most curative herbs in human intercourse. I love that. He said, Nietzsche was, had a great way with words. So kindness is one of the most curative herbs in human intercourse. So um, in a moment, I'm, we're going to go into a more meditative place. I just want to share with you, some of you will have said, what's that yellow? What's that yellow poking its head around the corner of the screen? And it is, as you can see, some daffodils. Now that was a gift. Somebody brought these round as a gift. There's an act of kindness. Now, one of the most amazing things for me about daffodils is, I read, and I have no, doubt, no reason to disbelieve, that uh, they share a remarkable degree of DNA with humans. I wonder if you can guess how much, just how much DNA do you think a daffodil shares with us? It's in the region of 67, 66, 67%. Two thirds of a daffodil's DNA is the same as ours. If ever we want a, a reminder that we're all connected, things like that, bring it home. Okay. Can I invite us and can I invite us all to close our eyes and just sink into the breath, really sink into kindness, why not? Be kind to the body, be kind to the breath, let the breath be kind to me. And I invite us all to enter in our mind's eye into a grove of trees, a sacred grove in our mind's eye. We enter into a sacred grove of beautiful trees. Just imagine it, we're there. So all of us in this moment, we're bathed in the tender presence of trees. Just be aware of all the trees in a large circle and we're part of that. And trees look after each other with kindness. Now let them be aware of those trees sharing their kindness with each of us. And let all the troubles, the anxieties and the stresses of our outer life be eased and washed away in kindness. Let them let all of that wash away into the earth through the kind loving presence of tender trees. We'll just deepen that in a moment. I invite us to walk towards the center of the grove with all the trees in a large circle around us. We walk to the center of this grove And here we are, individuals from all around this earth, all around this globe. In this moment, we're together, united in this circle of trees in our mind's eye. And we just take a few moments to really absorb and feel and connect with kindness. Let it wash over us, let it bathe us and refresh and heal. How could anyone ever tell you that you're anything less than beautiful? How could anyone ever tell you that you're anything less than whole? How could anyone fail to notice 
that your being is a miracle and how deeply you're connected to my soul. How could anyone ever tell you that you're anything less than beautiful? How could anyone ever tell you that you're anything less than whole? How could anyone fail to notice that your being is a miracle and how deeply we're connected through our soul? So bathing in kindness and offering kindness back into the circle, to the earth, to the trees to ourselves. I'm just walking back to the edge of the circle in our mind's eye. I invite us to walk back to the edge of the circle, turn round and face the middle and give a little bow of gratitude. And then let the image of the trees in the sacred grove, in the global grove. Let that fade and return your awareness gradually and gently back to this place, this time, wherever you're sitting, whatever you're, wherever you are, back into the room where you are. So kindness, so easily forgotten, so easily neglected, such a crucial element of life. So Khalil Gibran, some wonderful words, he said, tenderness and kindness are not signs of weakness and despair, but manifestations of strength and resolution. Tenderness and kindness, strength and resolution. And... Um, Aesop said, no act of kindness, no matter how small, is ever wasted. It's never wasted. Okay. So this is an adaptation of a poem. I've changed the words slightly. It's Confucius who wrote it, so I'm not taking credit for the poem, but I've adapted it to kindness. If there is kindness in the heart, there will be beauty in the character. If there's beauty in the character, there will be harmony in the home. If there's harmony in the home, there'll be order in the nations. And if there's order in the nations, there will be peace in the world. So kindness is a great secret weapon, isn't it? It's like a nuclear option, <laughs> acts of kindness. There's an interesting thought. Kindness as a nuclear option. I'll go with that. So, Gandhi said the simplest act of kindness are far more powerful than a thousand heads bowing in prayer. And um, I've enjoyed just exploring kindness briefly and uh, with you all. And I feel full of I feel uh, washed in kindness, and I hope some of you do, all of you. I hope you do too. Sending love and blessings. Bye for now. <laughs>